what does the bank actually do? What does the bank actually do with your money? So the U.S. banking system operates of a system called the fractional reserve banking. So fractional reserve banking, most people have, um, there's different ways in which to explain it. But I want you guys to take a listen to this very, it's a very, very, uh, I want to say it's a very, very simple explanation of how fractional reserve banking actually works. And I, at the end of it all, I want you to go ahead and be the judge of it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a listen to this. Banks are allowed to create money through a system called fractional reserve banking. Whenever you deposit money, the bank is legally required to keep a certain percentage of it somewhere safe, but can lend everything else. Here's an example based on a 10% reserve requirement. John goes to his bank and deposits $1,000. John's bank keeps $100 and lends the remaining $900 to Mike. There is now $1,900 in the financial system, John's $1,000 deposit, and Mike's $900 loan. Next, Mike uses the $900 to buy a laptop from Karen. Then Karen deposits her $900 at another bank. The bank keeps 10% and lends the remaining $810 to George. There is now $2,710 in the system. John's $1,000 deposit, Karen's $900 so, deposit, so, so. deposit, and George's $810 loan. This goes on and on until John's initial $1,000 is turned into approximately $10,000. Believe it or not, commercial banks actually create more money than central banks. Okay, so I want you guys to pay attention. I know that 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 basically it just kind of gives it a summary and makes it sound like you know it's 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 all a good thing. But think about it. Why would they tell you to save money? Okay. Now, if we're operating off of the ten percent rule, basically, if they have your money, you give them a thousand, and they're able to lend your money out. They go, "Hey, John just came in, and John just gave us a grand, right?" They go ahead and call James, and so they say, "Hey, James, you know, John just gave us a thousand dollars. So, James, what we want to do right now is we want to go ahead and give you nine hundred of that thousand dollars, and you can go ahead and use it. You know, we'll charge you a six percent, four percent, five percent interest rate on it. You go ahead and make the money, more money off of that." So the real concept as to why you're being told to save money is because the banks cannot make money without your savings, okay? The banks cannot make money without your savings because when you save money, the banks take that money and then they loan that money out. And basically, after of loaning that money out, they're able to make more money from it. Now, most people might be, you know, worrying about, like, why did the Silicon Valley Bank uh, collapse? I think that was made. Silicon Valley Bank collapse was basically because the banks don't have your money in there. Like, the banks don't actually keep your money when you give them the money they go ahead and loan that money out so in in in, in retrospect how whatever you're thinking like oh my god you know what you're looking at you you log into your account you look on your online banking and you see you know seven hundred dollars no my friend there's only 70 bucks in there that's only 70 bucks if you go to the bank right now like you know let's say you put in 70 grand and you go to the bank i want my 70 grand they're gonna be like why you can go deposit your money now right right now and they're gonna ask you why do you want that money. Why? You're going to get the IRS is going to get, it's going to audit you. There's going to be all of this systems is going to come into play just based off of you saying, I deposit this money in, or I want to take this money out. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that into, into play and I'm bringing that into question is I want you to think about it from a perspective as to if you've been told something for the rest of your life for, for, for the past 10, 20, 30, 40 years, why is that? Why is that? And that's basically because of the fractional reserve banking system. And the fractional reserve banking system, for it to function, it needs savers. It needs people for you to basically, for people like you to go ahead and save their money. And I want you guys to pretty much watch this video to Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki, if you guys have read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he basically talks a little bit about money. Right now, a lot of the moves he takes are a little risky. And I don't recommend a lot of people take that. But I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this because he makes some interesting commentary. And I think it's beneficial for you and I basically to listen to. Let's go ahead and break this. There you go. Perfect. You pay taxes because you're working for money. Then they tell you to save money. Do you know why they tell you to save money? I don't know. It's the banks run the world. The rich run the world. So let's say you save one dollar US or one euro, one yen. The banking system can lend out ten. Then they tell you to save money. So they, they want you to save money so they can lend out your money 10 times. So your dollar became worthless 10 times over. You pay taxes because so, you're working. Okay. Now, he just basically summarizes and says exactly what I just said, which is the reason why the banks want you to save money is they want you to save money because when you save money, 
when you realistically, when you save money, the banks were able to use that money to go ahead and go ahead and make more money. So in a way, you kind of think about it as far as you're being used for your money. Now, you're probably watching this going, well, does that mean that I should not save money? Does that mean that, you know, saving money is 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 not a thing I should do? You got to understand this. Since you were born, since before you and I were born, there was a game that was created. I want you to think about it from a perspective. There was a game that was created before you and I were born. We came into this world. We came into life. We came into this game. This game was already, they already had top players on the game. Okay. So the way the players of the game designed the game was they designed the game for their benefit. Because imagine this. Imagine if you're the head honcher of a game and you've basically designed the game. You designed it for you to be profiting. Now, what are you profiting off of? You're profiting off of the backbone of the people that is basically you know, the, uh, the newcomers of the game. There's a reason why most people who get into this crypto, I don't know anything about crypto. I'm going to be talking about, because most of this is, I'm doing my research. Most of this, we're going to be talking about the crypto side of things as well, as far as, you know, the dangers of crypto, if crypto is actually good or bad, but that's going to be later in a few days. 